Certificate templates are for predefined security certificates that can be duplicated and used to customize a variety of certificates and key pairs on a public key infrastructure. Now I want to take a look at uh, certificate templates, which is a great feature implemented with an enterprise certificate authority. And there are version 1 templates that provide for backwards compatibility with older systems. There are version 2 templates, and they allow the customization of certificate settings and permit auto-enrollment. And there are version 3 templates that provide advanced cryptographic functions. And they can only be issued from a Windows uh, 2008 server, uh, you know, Enterprise CA at this point. And whatever Microsoft brings to us in the future, of course, will probably support that. Section 4, creating a certificate template. Let's configure a basic certificate template. So I'm going to open Server Manager. I'm going to select Roles, and I'm going to open Roles, Active Directory Certificate Services. I'm going to open Active Directory Certificate Services. And when I do, notice my options here. But I specifically want certificate templates down here. And all of these are basic templates that, you know, I can build my own templates from. Now, I can't modify the settings of these. Notice everything's grayed out here. Except for, in this case, the DCL. But what I can do is right-click and I can duplicate a template. And in this case, I'm going to do Windows Server 2008 Enterprise Edition. So I'll have some of those advanced features and properties. And I'm going to call this um, Pirates 2008 Basic EFS, so my domain name. And the validity period, I'm going to set to uh, two years there. And the renewal period, I'm going to configure for 10 weeks. Okay, and you can just notice some of the options that you can configure. Whether or not I choose to publish it in Active Directory is, you know, means whether or not users can search for it and find it in the Active Directory database. Um, for automatic renewal of smart card certificates, use the existing key if a new key cannot be created. And that's if I'm implementing smart cards. I guess we could look at a few more of these features. Under request handling, notice under the purpose tab here, I can choose signature, several different options, but I want encryption. The basic purpose of this EFS certificate will be for the, you know, for encrypting files and things. Include symmetric algorithms allowed by the subject. Just some of the options here. If you're, you know, doing symmetric versus asymmetric keys, allow the private key to be exported. If I was not going to do it as a key pair, I could untick that option, and it would only be the public key that were or that was allowed. Um, enroll subject without requiring any user input. Prompt the user during enrollment. And several options there. If I look under cryptography, you'll recognize RSA as sort of the basic standard algorithm used to generate key pairs, but there are other options there. And the minimum key size, again, that's kind of typical for things like IPsec and a PKI, public key infrastructure. Just look at some of the other options, hash algorithms, and there's MD5 down there. I'm going to go with, keep the default SHA-1. Subject name, um, going up here, there's DACL extensions. I'll try to speed up here so I'm not taking too long. Issuance requirements. Um, we're going to do superseded templates last because we're actually going to do something there. But um, you know, I, I can specify the safe certificate manager um, if I'm you know doing auto enrollment, and we'll configure that a little bit later. And then finally, here are superseded templates, and these are things that you know basically when I'm making this template, this is what I want it to replace. Or you know, in other words, when somebody wants to create a basic EFS certificate. I'm building this template on this as a template, but when I'm done, if I add basic EFS onto this tab, which we will, then in the future when they want a basic EFS certificate, it's going to pull not this one, the one that was predefined when we installed certificate services, but the one that we're going to define right now. I probably could have worded that a lot better, but I think you get the idea. So I'll click add. I'll keep working on the speech therapy thing. So <laughs> basic EFS, I want to select that and I'm going to click on OK. And so again, that when just remember that when from now on, once we create this, once I click on OK, um, then when we do a basic EFS, it's going to be our version of a basic EFS, right? All the things that we specified here, Pirates 2008 basic, basic EFS, the validity period, the renewal period, all of these things, options that we particularly specified. So I'm going to click on OK. And when I do that, notice that now it's down there. OK, and then if I were to right click and go to properties. Now I have a basic EFS certificate template that I can actually modify and utilize. And whenever I, in the future, whenever somebody wants to implement basic EFS, this is the actual template that they will be, you know, the actual certificate that they will be pulling it from. 
When configured, auto enrollment allows clients to automatically receive certificates without manually requesting them from a certificate authority. This feature is configured through group policy and certificate templates. To encrypt and decrypt files with EFS or the encrypting file system, users must have a certificate. When a certificate authority is not installed on a network, Windows creates a certificate locally on the PC where encryption and decryption take place. When a certificate is stored locally and not in Active Directory, it can be lost or deleted on the local machine and become unavailable. In addition, since it is local, it cannot be used to allow users to access the file from across the network. In contrast, when users' EFS certificates are stored in Active Directory, they can be centrally backed up and restored in the event of deletion or hardware failure. In addition, users may access files encrypted with certificates stored in Active Directory from across the network, not just locally. With EFS auto-enrollment enabled, a user certificate is created the first time she logs on to Active Directory. In this way, it is centrally stored and backed up and can be used to encrypt and decrypt files anywhere on the Active Directory network. Remember, auto-enrollment is configured through group policy and therefore a user must authenticate with the domain controller before a certificate can be issued to them. Section 5. Configure Certificate Auto-Enrollment Note, to implement auto-enrollment, first create and link a group policy object enabling this feature to a domain or organizational unit. We're going to set up auto-enrollment and to do that first we have to go to our domain controller and create a group policy object and link it to the domain. So I'm going to go to Start, Administrative Tools, and I want to select Group Policy Management. When I do, I'm going to go down here to Group Policy Objects, right click, and I'm just going to create a new Group Policy Object, and we're going to call this Auto Enrollment. Okay, and when I do, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select Edit. And what I want to go is to uh, User Configuration and Policies, and I want to go down to Windows Settings. Then I'm going to go to security settings and public key policies. And in public key policies, I'm just going to double click certificate services client auto enrollment. Notice it's not configured, so I want to select enabled. And some of the options here, we're going to go ahead and tick renew expired certificates, update pending certificates, and remove revoked certificates. We're going to click update certificates that use certificate templates. Leave that one unchecked. And I'm going to click OK. And then I can, you know, Go ahead and close the group policy object. Now I just want to link the GPO to my domain. So I'm going to come up here to pirates.the seven C's. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say link an existing GPO. And I'm going to select auto enrollment. And now that I've done that, that group policy is applied. Okay, it's the link is in effect and that group policy is now applied. Next, you need to configure enroll and auto enroll access control list and access control entries on the certificate template. And we're back on our member server, our certificate authority, our certificate services server Pegasus. And I want to open server manager. And I want to open up roles. And I want to open up active directory certificate services. And I want to go to certificate templates in this case. And I need to modify something. The uh, an access control entry or permission on the DACL, so I want to edit the security tab. So I'm going to right click. Remember we made our custom basic EFS, we called it Pirates 2008, because that's our domain. So I'm going to right click and select properties. I'm going to go to the security tab and I want to make sure that you know your typical authenticated user in Active Directory is a member of the domain users group. So I just need to check auto enroll and make sure that they have that permission. And then I could click OK or apply if I wanted to change something else, but that's all I really have to modify there. Okay, so I've modified the permission on that template in this way that you know they have permission to engage in auto enroll and to auto enroll and be automatically issued a certificate. Now what I want to do is go down to the node here which is the name of my certificate authority or my certificate services server. I'm going to right click and select properties. I just want to verify if I go to policy module and click properties that request handling is set to follow the settings in the certificate template if applicable otherwise automatically issue the certificate and that's the option that I've selected so I don't have to worry about anything there and then the next thing I want to do is if I open up my nodes here, notice that down here I have a folder called certificate templates. And you didn't see that in the standalone. We only had these four, but now we have an additional node because it's enterprise and we set up certificate templates in this version. Well, what I want to do is right click on that folder and I want to say new. I want to say certificate template to issue. 
and I'm going to go down and select our domain name which is Pirates 2008 Basic EFS. That's the template that we created from the Basic EFS built-in template. I'm going to click on OK. When I do that, it'll add that into that node or that folder. And at this point, I you know I can close my uh, certificate service is snapping and I'm I'm ready to begin auto enrollment. Section six: Test certificate auto enrollment. First, we're going to join a Windows 7 client to our domain. Now we're going to join a Windows 7 client to our Active Directory domain that we created, Pirates the Seven Seas. And remember that to do that, I right click on computer, go to properties, advanced system settings, computer name, and then I will click change. And I want to change it from a work group to a domain over here. And it's going to be uh, pirates. The seven C's. And also remember either via DHCP or by statically configuring the IP address. It will need the IP address of the domain controller that you set up that had the Active Directory DNS server. It needs that address because that's how it will find the domain in order to be able to join it, the global catalog, the directory services, and things that it needs. So I'm going to click on OK. When I do, it's going to prompt me for credentials, and this will be the domain or enterprise admin credentials. I'm just using administrator, the default, and there's my password. And it'll go out and try to contact that global catalog. And OK, contact the domain controller, join the domain. Welcome to the pirates.the7c's domain. Click OK. And I'll click OK and reboot. Let's create a new user in Active Directory to test auto enrollment of our custom EFS certificate. Having configured auto enrollment, we're going to go over to our 2008 server that's our domain controller and implement or use Active Directory users and computers. And let's make a user real quick. And this will be a new user who will log in and get a brand new EFS certificate. So new, and I'm going to go user, and I'm going to make Adama, Commander Adama. And I'm just going to specify that. Pirates at the seven C's does not change password. Password does not expire. I have password complexity turned on here so to give them a nice, decent, cryptic password. And finish. Okay, so now I have a user account, Adama, that exists in Active Directory, and now we can log in and test auto-enrollment on this user. If necessary, update group policy and the domain controller. I also may want to configure or do GP update just to refresh any group policies that I've created on the domain controller. And I'll just go through and you know propagate any group policies that have recently been changed or modified. And user policy update has been completed successfully. Looks good. Now let's log into the domain on the Windows 7 client. So we joined the domain on our Windows 7 workstation client and we rebooted. And remember when you do that, you have choices. You can log in locally to the machine or you can log in to the Active Directory domain as a user created in Active Directory users and computers. You just want to be careful that it's not locally. So notice if I were to just type in administrator, it's going to assume it's the local host name of the machine. So to avoid that, you might want to use the distinguished name or the user principal logon name, in which case my domain name, my domain tree is pirates. Um, and this way, you know, it tells Windows, hey, I want to log in to the domain as administrator, and then I'd put in my password. But in this example, we want to use the account that we created, Adama, and I'm going to go ahead and put his password in and log in. And it'll configure and create his desktop, which you know it caches those settings locally on the machine, but it's you know it's accessing his account and active directory users and computers. And at this point, group policy will have taken effect, and auto enrollment will have taken effect, and an EFS certificate would have been automatically generated and issued to this user. Once I've logged in as a Dama, I want to look at the automatically generated certificate, uh, the one that was issued and assigned to. So I'm going to open up a management console. And I'm going to add the certificate snap in. And I'm going to click Add for Certificates Current User and click OK. And when I've done that, I can open this up here. And I can go and look at my certificates. And here's Personal here. And here's the one issued to Adama um, from my CA. Okay. And in this case, it's the EFS you know, certificate that we created here. I'll pull 
these columns over here so you can kind of see. But the encrypting file system, and here's the certificate template it was built from. Let me pull this column over. Good grief, I'll just maximize that. Maybe you can see somewhere. All right, so Pirates 2008 Basic EFS. And then also, if I were to go here under certificates, notice that you know my certificate authority, the certificate services server set up in my domain, Pirates, is listed there as well. It's a trusted certificate authority. So now I can begin to use this certificate backed up in Active Directory, centrally located and accessible across the network to encrypt and decrypt files. Section 7, Test Encryption with an Auto-Enrolled EFS Certificate. Now a quick refresher about the encrypting file system or EFS. Uh, if you haven't used it or you haven't used it in a while or you might, you know, if you're new to Windows, let's go on to the C drive here and we'll make a folder and on any clamp that you run, you can use your EFS generated certificate to encrypt and, and decrypt files. Now, it needs to be on an NTFS partition, otherwise it won't support these features. But I'll make a folder and we'll make a document here. And we'll call it Secrets. And if I want to encrypt it, I would right click, go to Properties, and then go to Advanced. And I have the option to both compress and encrypt if it's on an NTFS partition. And these are mutually ex exclusive, so if I compress, I cannot encrypt, and if I encrypt, I cannot compress, but I want to choose Encrypt. I'm going to select OK, and then OK. Notice I can't encrypt the file only or the file in its parent folder. Um, or I, you know, And I could always select Always Encrypt Only the File, but I'm going to choose Encrypt the File Only. And when I do, by default, under Folder Options, it's set to be color-coded, so encrypted files are like green, and I think compressed files are blue. But... Um, this way, it's, it's encrypted with my certificate, and I, you know, that certificate was auto-enrolled, and it can only be decrypted with my certificate. Now, if I didn't set up Active Directory, and I didn't set up auto-enrollment, and I didn't have a certificate authority set up, I could still encrypt and decrypt files, but that would be local. All right, my certificate would be on the local machine, so I couldn't use it to encrypt and decrypt across the network. Also, it's not going to get backed up. It's not centrally stored, so if I lose that, you know that machine dies or it gets deleted or something, then you know uh, it, it's I it, I I can't back it up and restore it like I could if it were in Active Directory. Section eight: Request a certificate with the Certificates Microsoft Management Console snap-up. Log into my Windows Seven, um, you know, client workstation here, joined to the Pirates domain, and again, I'm going to bring up a Microsoft Management Console and add the certificate snap-in. We're going to look at using the certificate snap-in to, you know, request a certificate. So I'm going to go File and Add Remove Snap-in. I'm going to select Certificates and Add to the current user and OK. If I do this here in Windows 7, I'll come down. I can go to Personal and with this highlighted the Certificates uh, folder, I can right-click and say All Tasks and I can click Request a New Certificate. And then notice before you begin, the following steps will help you install certificates. Yada yada yada. I'm just going to click next. And here, select certificate enrollment policy configured by your administrator or configured by you. I'm going to do the Active Directory enrollment policy. And notice that these are the kinds of certificates I can request, the ones that are available now. Basic EFS. There's the customized template we created for our domain Pirates 2008 Basic EFS and user. I'm going to select this option to show all templates. And these are others that they're not available, but you know I can at least see what they are. Other things that I, I might request there. So now I'm going to untick that option, send it back, and again let's say that I wanted to specifically you know request a Pirates 2008 basic EFS, and then I could click enroll. And then it'll go and contact the Pegasus Certificate Authority in my domain. And then I can click finish. And now I have two. Woohoo! But you know they're both EFS certificates, and let me pop this all the way open and pull this over here. So I mean, you can see that it's the it's the template we created earlier, Pirates 2008 Basic EFS. So just an example of using the certificate snap-in to request a certificate.